All right, punks, we are back with another 2-5 session from Parks Casino for you. This one, we get through some good bluffs, we get some hands paid, we make some mistakes, but that's the way sessions go sometimes. Also, remember, hit the like the subscribe buttons. It really helps out the channel a lot. Drop some comments below. I really like seeing them, really like responding to them. So, without further ado, let's get to some hands. We sit down for this session and immediately notice that this table is full of easy money. Five players are limping and calling any raise and folding a lot when they miss the flop. So we decide to be a little patient here and finally wake up with pocket kings in middle position. Under the gun, plus two. Two players to my right raises to $20. I three bet this kid to $100 and he calls. Now this kid looks like he's a younger kid, probably in his mid-20s, who in my opinion, looks like he's the type that thinks he knows a lot about poker, is trying to be a poker pro maybe. I don't know. But we go to a flop, and that flop is not favorable. Ace, queen, jack. Like I said, I'm not loving this flop because the odds are that this player has some sort of ace. So I plan to check if he checks to me. But unfortunately for me, I don't get a chance. And he donk leads into me all in for about $400. Now I pretend to think about it for a minute, but from the fact that when he went to shove his chips in, he knocked them all over and was shaking like a leaf. It's pretty obvious that he has some sort of big hand and I just fold, tap the table and tell him good hand. And he turns over ace jack off suit. So we really get away with the minimum here, but I like my play. I like the three bet, keeping the pressure on. So we go off uh, with a little loss here, but off to the next hand. Two hands later, we are under the gun plus two, and we look down at two red tens. The $10 straddle is on here, so we size up to $55. Since half the table seems to be calling anything pre-flop, I figure to get more money in here for the times that they whiff the flop and I can't get any more value on later streets. The button and the small blind player all call, and we go to a flop of ace jack four. Small blind checks to me, and I'll leave for $80 here as I would with any ace x hand. The button quickly folds, so we only need to get it through the small blind, who thinks about it for a minute. Now this is the same kid from the last hand who shoved his top two into me with the kings. So I'm a little worried that he might make a move, but he thinks about it and eventually folds. So we're able to pick up a decent pot here without much effort. The very next hand, we are under the gun and we look down at two red queens. I raise to $20. Middle position, hijack, button, small blind, and big blind all call. Guess $20 was not enough here. We go to a flop six ways and see ace, jack, three. This ace, jack keeps coming back to haunt me when I have a pair under an ace. When it checks to me, I check in flow. With it being six ways, it's unlikely that someone doesn't have an ace X hand. When it gets to the middle position, he bets $30. Hijack calls. I fold since I know 100% that I am beat. When it gets to showdown, it turns out that middle position player had ace three of clubs for top and bottom pair. And he then turned a boat. So it's a good thing that our instincts are on tonight and we were able to get away from this one pretty cheaply. So after these last three hands, which all came within the span of about 15 minutes, we go seriously card dead. It has to be at least an hour, maybe two, and it is agony. We cannot get a single hand to play, and there's so much money moving around this table that is up for grabs, and I'm trying to be patient, but my patience is wearing thin, and even the hands that I'm thinking about getting in with that are kind of marginal to weak, those aren't even hitting the flops, and even if I would have gotten into them, I would be folding on the flop bets anyway. So luckily, we're not being too impatient, but we decide that we need to table change. This game just isn't helping us, so we move to another table and are immediately rewarded by looking down at King Jack of Clubs on the button. The cutoff raises to 25, 
and we call and everyone else folds. So going heads up with 57 in the pot, we see a flop of nine deuce seven rainbow. The cutoff bet's 35. And I think about it for a bit since it's been so long since I've had anything to play. And we do have two overs here and a backdoor draw. And for the fact that I'm getting so bored and patience is wearing thin, I decide to make the call. With 132 in the pot, the turn is the Jack of Diamonds. We turn top pair second kicker and are feeling pretty good when the cutoff leads into us again. He sizes up this time to $65. I think raising here is a bit ambitious since I will just fold out any kind of bluffs or lower pairs that he has and I'm only going to be getting called by something that beats me, so I just call. The river bangs the ten of hearts. Cutoff is undeterred and fires a third street at us, this time for 125. Instead of thinking things through and realizing players at this level don't bet three streets without a good hand, I call and find out that we were behind the whole way when the cutoff tables pocket aces. No! It's a lesson in being patient and staying with your reads, but we will just take this one and chalk it up to experience and try and learn from it for the next time. A couple hands later, we are in middle position and we look down at Queen Eight of Hearts. Straddle is on this hand and the player to my right calls. I call, the button calls, the small blind calls, and then the big blind raises to 65. We have a lot of history with this player and we know he is capable of making a squeeze to just try and steal the dead money. So we decide to look him up and the hijack also comes along for the ride. With 225 in the pot, we see a flop of King King Queen. The big blind now checks. We check behind because we think we might be good here, but we want to see what this hijack player is going to do behind. And he checks as well. So still three ways we see the king of diamonds on the turn. Big blind checks again. And I think about betting here because there's a good chance that I'm good, but I don't think I will get a call on the street except by the king or pocket aces maybe. Uh, so we don't think that it's a good idea to bet here and we'll see what the hijack does and they check behind. So when the 10 of diamonds hits the river and the big blind checks again, I make about a half pot size bet of $100 thinking that I might be able to get called light by ace high and the hijack immediately folds and it goes around to the big blind. He tanks for a minute or so and eventually he looks me up and tables ace of diamonds, jack of spades. He did river a straight, which was pretty meaningless because it was just a bluff catcher at this point. So we're happy to see things are starting to turn around for us as we scoop this pot. At this point, the session has started turning around. The hand that we just showed was the start, and we want a couple other small hands after that that were not good enough to put in the vlog. And now we've gone card dead for a little while. So we get a little speculative with this next hand where we limp from middle position with 8-6 offsuit. A player to my left limps as well, as does the hijack and the button. Then the big blind makes it 30 to go. We call thinking this is not that big of a raise. We're in position and we're expecting the players behind us to call and take a flop multi-way. But that plan goes up in smoke when they all fold. So with 75 in the pot, we see a flop of queen, queen, four. Big blind checks, so we lead out for 35 here since we missed the flop and we have no real draws, but big blind calls. So with 145 in the pot, we see the two of spades on the turn. The big blind checks again, and since we improve to absolutely nothing here, we fire again, this time sizing up to $90. Without much hesitation, the villain calls. Now with 325 in the pot, we see a nine of spades on the river. Now that we've improved to almost have a gut shot here, we decide that the only way we can take this pot down is to fire another bullet. The villain checks to us again, so we continue the story and fire $210. The villain goes into the tank and starts trying to probe us to figure out what we are doing. He asks if I have queen eight again, and I do my best to give up nothing. After about a minute, he eventually folds. We sigh a big sigh of relief inside and scoop up pot with a nice eight high. 
The very next hand, we looked down at an actual hand this time in middle position of pocket queens. We raised to $20 and the player to my immediate left decides to three bet me to 60. And it folds around to me and I think about four betting here, but we're both pretty deep and I don't want to get stacks in since this player has not gotten out of line all night. If I four bet, he'll either shove at which point I know I'm behind or he'll fold and I won't get any more value out of the hand. So I think a call is the best and that's what we do. So with 127 in the pot, we see a pretty decent flop. Queen 5-3. I checked to the three better to conceal my hand strength, but unfortunately he checks back. The turn is an inconsequential six of spades. So I lead out for about a half pot size bet of 65 because I need to build the pot now. I can't wait for him to bet. Luckily, he does come along and calls. So we go to a river with 257 in the pot, and that river is the nine of diamonds. The only thing that got there that beats me is seven, eight, which is highly unlikely because I don't see him raising a hand like that pre-flop. With that in mind, I size up to $125. The villain thinks for a moment and then calls. All right, all right, all right. I show top set and he mucks. So we take another good one down here. The next playable hand we get comes when we are in the small blind and look down at 9 8 of diamonds. Under the gun plus 2 raises to 25. The button and I both call. So with $80 in the pot, we go to a flop of ace 9 8. We check and float to the aggressor. Unfortunately, he checks as well, but the button does not disappoint and fires for $40. We just call here and under the gun plus two, who was the original aggressor, folds. When the four clubs hits the turn, I figure I should start building a pot now since the button may check back if he has only like a weak ace X hand. I don't want to check through, so I bet $80. Unfortunately, the button folds. Apparently my read was wrong and he was just trying to steal the pot on the flop. And I guess I should have checked to him again and let him bluff again. One orbit later, we are in the small blind again and we look down at ace queen offsuit. Middle position, hijack and button all limp. No limping here, we make it $30 to go. The big blind and the middle position player call and with $100 in the pot, we see a flop of ace jack four with the ace jack of spades. I check here for deception and the big blind also checks, but middle position player leads out $40. I see no reason to raise here since we'd be pushing out all of his bluffs and losing value. So I just call, the big blind also calls. With 220 in the pot, we see a turn of the eight of diamonds. This looks like a clean card for me, so I check again. Big blind also checks and middle position player fires for $75 this time. As on the flop, we don't want to push out any inferior hands, so I just call. The big blind now gives up and folds. With 375 in the pot, we see the queen of spades. This does make top two pair for us, but it does bring in the front door flush. I think betting here is a little ambitious because we are not going to get called by an inferior hand here like ace x or jack x, but we could get raised either as the nuts or a bluff. So therefore, I think that check call is the best route for us. So we check and middle position player checks quickly behind. So we table our two pair and we are good and we are able to scoop a nice little pot here on the river. A few moments later. We are in the small blind and we look down at King Four Diamonds. Stroud is on this hand and under the gun plus two, a middle position player, hijack, button, all call. I complete from the small blind and the big blind does as well and the straddler checks his option. With $70 in the pot, we see a flop of King Five Eight with the Five of Diamonds. Checks to the button who bets $40. I call with top pair here and the hijack also calls. Everyone else folds. There's $190 in the pot and we see the turn, which is the ace of diamonds. We improve to the nut flush draw and we still check since we do have a weak kicker to our king and we have enough equity that we should just be check calling here. Hijack now leads out for $65. This player has been playing a little crazy and it's been very sticky. So when the button calls, I call as well since there's so many hands that beat me now, but I have so much equity that I would like to realize and a raise is out of the question. With 375 in the pot, the river is the nuts. 
with the six of diamonds. We check in flow since we are certain here that the hijack will bet. He does not disappoint and he drops 125 into the middle. The button thinks about it for a minute and then he calls. So I try and look like I'm in a tough spot here and not sure if I want to call. Eventually I settle on a raise of $500. Unfortunately for us, both players quickly fold and we take down the pot, but we don't get any more value. I think if we would have sized down a little bit more, we might've been able to get one of them to call. I know the uh, button player said that he had two pair. So maybe we could have got a crying call out of him if we wouldn't have gone so big, but we were going for the fences and it didn't work out for us this time, but we did scoop a nice pot. The next hand we play, we are under the gun and limp with ace nine of hearts. Middle position limps as well, and the button raises to $25. I call, and the middle position player calls. So with $82 in the pot, we see a flop of ace, 10, six, with a 10 and six of hearts. It's a great flop for me since I hit top pair and the nut flush draw. We check for deception here. Middle position player also checks, and the button leads for $50. I call with my pair and draw, and the middle position player folds. There's now 182 in the pot, and we go to a turn, which is the jack of diamonds. I check again since we don't improve, but to my surprise, the button checks again. My read is that he doesn't have an ace x hand here, so either he has an inferior flush draw or a lesser pair. The river is the ten of spades. With his check on the turn, I decide to lead out here for $75. I don't want to check in through in case he has a hand that he can call with, but the button now raises to 215. I go into the tank here trying to figure out whether he could be doing this as a bluff. I eventually think that maybe he is the type of player that could do this as a bluff, either with a busted flush draw or some kind of pair over the 10, maybe the jack, and I end up calling. Unfortunately, I'm immediately shown the bad news when he turns over the 10-8 of diamonds. Crap, boobs, crap. He had flopped second pair, turned a diamond draw, and river trips on us. And we just need to get better at sniffing these out and realizing that at this level, the players are not making a lot of river bluffs. And if they raise, especially that big, then they must have it. And we really have to get away from these hands in the future to preserve the hands where we do make value and preserve our stack. Our last playable hand of the night finds us in the big blind looking down at four or five off suit. There are six limpers to me, so I just check my option and we go to a flop with $35 in the pot. That flop is pretty favorable for us as it is 2-3 jack. We check our open ender here and the player under the gun leads out for $25. Everyone folds when it gets back to me. I call. With 85 in the pot, we see a two of diamonds on the turn. This is a perfect card for me to start turning my hand into a bluff since I have all the twos in my range and we have outs to improve. With that in mind, I donk lead for $55. Under the gun looks a little confused, thinks about it for a second, and then calls. So with 195 in the pot, the river is the king of diamonds. We break out here, but that isn't going to stop me. I lead out for $130. Under the gun goes into the tank and it looks like he has a one pair hand at best because our bet here is putting max pressure on him and we can tell he's uncomfortable. Even though people at this stake don't really like to fold the pair with the board being paired and the flush draw coming in, he eventually folds. And we're able to get this last one through before we rack up a few hands later and head to the cage. All right, punks, we are into this session for $1,300. We are out for $1,727, so we are up $427 on the session. Not bad considering we made some mistakes here and we could have gotten away from some hands that we didn't, but overall, up sessions are good sessions. So remember, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Really helps out the channel a lot, gets us out to more grinders like you so we can share this content with them. Also, drop some comments below. I like going through them, I like seeing them, I like interacting with everybody. It's been great seeing everybody's feedback. I always like to get feedback so I can make the channel better. So please, if you wanna suggest something, drop it below. Also, if you'd like to see some more of our content, you can check it out right over here and we'll see you next time.